What is the fridge telling you? Feed me, Seymour! How are you? Good. We hope you're good. Yes. Um, today we're here to talk to you guys about a little something cute and, and small and loud. <laughs> we're here to talk to you about your kids. Yay, kids! Yay. Woo, who doesn't love kids? Um, and just kind of, we want you to think back to your childhood and your relationship with food and the things your parents kind of told you were good, weren't good. Why did they tell you that? Was it like, you know, did you ever think about why they told you not to do this or not to do that? Yeah. And we want you to kind of, we're here to kind of tell you that. It's probably not the best way you want to reinforce that to your kids. Right. Um, so we're pretty much going to talk to you about your child's relationship with food. Yes. And, um, we're here to tell you that. Using food as a punishment and reward system is not the best idea, and if you're doing it, we'd like to ask you to eliminate it. <laughs> Please stop. I mean, you can consult with your spouse about that too. Right, but, obviously. Uh, and, 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 um, in reality though, based on the current research, based on everything that we've experienced, right. uh, we want you guys to help your kids establish their own relationship with food, yeah. and we want to tell you that, to tell your kids that, and teach them that um, food is a very intimate thing and what their body calls for is very very important to them right and it's and it can be very different right for instance you you know a child sits down to eat and they're hungry or they tell you that mom dad grandma I'm hungry um, and then you might you know force them to do this or if you eat all your food then you can get this mm -hmm. or when you get as a punishment if you don't eat all your food then you won't be able to do that mm -hmm. that is that's giving them a negative association mm -hmm. with food and as they continue to grow older it's okay well this happens with food this happens mm -hmm. you know doesn't happen with food and that could be mm -hmm. you know kind of psychological mm -hmm. and, and not give a positive association mm -hmm. because the reality is out of all the things in life, um, you have to eat, right? You have to eat to survive. To. And so when you sit down three times a day to eat, um, you want to be a positive experience, right? Like, I mean, I love to eat and I, you know, I've gotten to the habit of where I would do other things while I'm eating, you know, and then you're not being mindful when you eat. And so it should be a, I wouldn't say sacred, obviously, that's, you know, a little too extreme, but it should be a very intimate, like you said, experience where you're sitting down, you're taking the time and, and not have any negative associations about if I eat all my food, this is going to happen or, or, you know. Yeah. And you can pretty much start doing that with your child right now. For sure. Take this to consistency, yeah. right? Having a unified message, like she mm -hmm. said, you know, talk to your spouse mm -hmm. or whomever the other caretaker mm -hmm. is, but being on the same page. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to have a united front mm -hmm. around what's happening mm -hmm. at the dinner table. You can't just expect to make changes mm -hmm. and yet your spouse mm -hmm. or whomever mm -hmm. is steady over here eating french fries, right? You're yeah. giving a mis mixed message mm -hmm. to your child or to your children mm -hmm. and that's not going to promote mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if you guys, if you're having a hard time getting your children to eat, a lot of things it takes a lot of patience yes because so, children can be picky eaters I yeah mean, especially if they're younger mm -hmm. what's this if the color's mm -hmm. weird if it smells weird mm -hmm. because we're very mm -hmm. visual with mm -hmm. some a lot of my students we do a multi-sensory taste testing worksheet mm -hmm. where the first thing is they have to look at it what does it look like mm -hmm. and then they have to smell it then they put it in their mouth mm -hmm. and then before they even start chewing and swallowing they have to write you know what is it what does it you know feel like the texture mm -hmm. and so because a lot that's how we are as humans mm -hmm. you know we look at something we smell it mm -hmm. we see it mm -hmm. you know all these and mm -hmm. kids are especially even more heightened mm -hmm. uh, to those responses mm -hmm. and the more you expose your child to a food the more likely they'll want to even you know try it or touch it or think about it and eventually you know they'll start to like it so right. it, just because you gave your child Brussels sprouts for the first time right. doesn't mean that they're never ever gonna want them. So, um, but telling them, hey, you have to eat the Brussels sprouts. Yeah, that you might need to not clean your plate. If you don't eat that, then you can't yeah. go outside. I mean, mm -hmm. really, mom, dad, like that's a little yeah. more extreme. So our message here is to kind of like be loud but stay quiet at the same time. Right. So I make those really really good foods available to your kids without forcing them or telling them that they're good or bad. For example, um, I have a little brother and He's so uh, cute. <laughs> he asks for quesadillas all the time, but you know I'm not just gonna make him a plain old simple quesadilla. Right. Um, I'm gonna chop up some cucumbers. I chopped up from some cucumbers once, and I also put some orange slices. Sometimes mm -hmm. I throw on, on there some carrots. And I give it to him. I don't tell him, hey, you need to eat this, you need to eat that, you need to finish your plate. I just hand him the plate. Um, 
at first, he honestly, he didn't really eat any of the cucumbers or any of the other colorful things on the plate. <laughs> um, the next time around, he ate only the cucumbers. The next time after that, he ate only the oranges. Right. So, I mean, it's... It's kind of, it's kind of, you just have to kind of give, yeah. take, receive what you yeah. can. But you know what? Um, we, yeah, we just want to tell you guys to kind of just take a deep breath and do what you can. Be and, loud, be silent, but mm -hmm. have, be consistent and, and yeah. just be on the same page. Yeah. Everyone in the family, mm -hmm. love on food, love your children, mm -hmm. give them those helpful things and realize that if they're struggling with something, a, a certain food that you really want them mm -hmm. to have, realize that they will grow older they will grow up and they will maybe grow appreciation for it because as a child i hate asparagus mm -hmm. and i don't know if it was the way that it was prepared or you know you bring them what, asparagus no that was brussels sprouts <laughs> is there a personal issue yeah. morgan testimony <laughs> but it was just not positive and yeah. i hated it but once i grew older and i was you know someone roasted with a little olive oil a little you know a little Garlic. seasoning and i'm like yes asparagus <laughs> yes. so i mean <laughs> You know, times change, the mm. palate changes, and children mature, and that's mm. that's the beauty of it. Also, stay consistent. You know, um, give them give them a unified front, and mm. you know, things will things will get better. Yes, yes. We'd like to thank you guys for joining us once again today, and we hope you enjoyed this message message, and we hope that your children will also enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next time. Take care.